Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. Coming to you today on the 13th of September 2015, I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, opening shots and trilogies here today. First off, let's talk about The Fall of High Watch from Mark Sehested. As I think we've seen over time, I've kind of grown to like Mark Sehested more and more every book of his that I read, and this is no exception, Fall of High Watch. Really interesting sort of tale, you know, it's kind of a pro and a con, both that this did not feel like the realms at all to me. For the first half, two-thirds, I can't remember where it is, but at one point, eventually, the characters kind of fall into the Feywild, and it's like, oh, okay, I guess I guess this does take place in the D&D sort of universe or whatever. But up to that point, it, it felt very, very different in, in mostly a good way. Uh, this thing kind of reminded me of Lost for the first half because we kept getting little flashbacks or glimpses into the history of characters and it would kind of change how I viewed them, and I really like that. I really, really like the fact that he did a lot of work making the kind of, oh, I wouldn't say main antagonist, but, you know, the person who brings about the fall of High Watch, at least. He puts a lot of effort into making that character interesting, believable, and kind of likable. You, you can, I mean, you can at least sympathize uh, with his reasons for doing what he does. Then, of course, you know, very sort of typically, he's taken out by the real mustache-twirling villains after book one and blah, 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 blah. And also, kind of intriguing, our main characters don't even really, like, interact with him after the very beginning because they're stuck dealing with something completely different. Our main character is actually, like, something that I liked, though I assume that that's going to change very quickly, is that she is, I, first of all, it's a she, but I guess that's not that unusual for the realms, but she is, um, she seems like zero level, like an NPC, because she's kind of royalty, and I think she's done some hunting or whatever, but she's not an adventurer at all, and uh, really has to be taken care of by the people around her. But she's also marked by Nwandan, Nendawin, something like that, uh this, like, hunter god dude who every now and then just kind of shows up like an Amon Amarth CD cover and is like, I'm badass, anyway, bye. <laughs> and, uh, and it's like, okay. We get a lot of stuff, as I mentioned, in the Feywild, which doesn't especially interest me, but the way that Sehested presented it just as this kind of crazy roving chaos where, you know, you've got these kind of creepy characters and everything around every corner... I found that fun. I found it, like, I really enjoyed that feeling of not really knowing if you were safe at any given moment and whom to trust and yada da 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 da. I'm really looking forward to moving forward with this trilogy. Uh, I will be interested to see where it goes. The third one is called Cry of the Ghost Wolf, which sounds <laughs> really odd. So, yeah, looking forward to some ghost wolfy goodness. The other one we're going to talk about is Sword Mage by Richard Baker. If you recall, I have mentioned that book many times before because that was, up to this point, the only 4E book that I had given a shot uh, up to the point of me starting this <laughs> uh, this whole project years ago now. Jeez. But anyway, so Sword Mage, Richard Baker. I really like Richard Baker in general. But my problem when I read it the first time, and I, I looked because I still had it on my Kindle, I had gotten 52% of the way through it, so over halfway through it, and I just gave up because it felt like to me that as soon as the powers kicked in, then it felt like, oh god, now we're reading this completely non-D&D sort of story. Well, on a reread, I have to say, I think I just don't particularly like the way that Baker describes powers, especially spells, in this book, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the fact that the sword mage feels weird to me. I don't know. It just... It, it, something about it doesn't quite add up, but in any case, the first third of the book is just incredible. It's just really, really good. It has the feel of, like, a noir story, because it's like Jaren, our main character, and his halfling sidekick, which I love, his halfling sidekick, 
come back to this small town that he's from and things have changed and he's there because his best friend was murdered and it's not like he's there to solve his best friend's murder but of course you know that that's gonna be part of it right and he, he's just come to pay his respects and see the girl he used to have a crush on and da 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 and kind of stir shit up i mean that's actually i can't remember who that was but somebody once said about fiction or whatever that every story can be boiled down to uh two two sentences uh, a stranger comes into town everything changes and it's eerie how often that's correct but in any case this is pretty much that word per word, right? I mean, you could say, oh, he's not a stranger, he grew up there, but he's a stranger. That's the point of the story. Then, at some point in this book, it really feels as if Baker got really bored with what he was doing, because it just starts kind of repeating itself and getting really dull. I wish I would have marked that, but there's this one word that he uses every time, like, so... Jaren, our main character, and his halfling sidekick, whose name is escaping me, and I keep wanting to call him Jack, but that's not right. They are investigating all these crypt break-ins that have happened because Jaren's friend uh, was he was killed at a crypt, and obviously he had figured out the pattern or whatever, and he was killed while people were breaking in, and they're trying to figure out the pattern, and it's like they rope and saddle their horses, and and there's a word that he uses for that. I can't remember the word. I think it starts with a P. Anyway, he ropes and saddles the horses, and, and they go and investigate a crypt, and then they come back and get back on the horses, and it's like, this happens about eight times in two chapters? And you're like, okay, I get it, but why isn't this a paragraph? I mean, it, it feels, like, ridiculously overwrought. Then there are sections with the half-orcs, you know, like some half orcs being used by a higher power and it's like oh i'll give you power if you go and raise a village and they're like okay why not and da 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 da, da and it, you know it's like and and all these things are kind of building and you're expecting this giant heated conflagration at the end between like seven different factions and instead it's more kind of a weak sauce like I don't know, I skipped most of the ending because it was like, okay, I get where this is going. Like, the town fights the orcs, and the town kind of has to win because this is the start of a trilogy or whatever. Uh, and, and and even then, like, the the kind of main antagonist for Jaren through the entire thing, which, like, ugh, that was another thing. Just He really should have just been, like, sporting t-shirts that were like, I'm a villain because he was just so openly mustache, mustache twirling. And at the end, like, there's no comeuppance for him, and he's somewhere else, and something from Jaren's past is like, hey, you want to go help take down this dude? And he's like, eh, sure, why not? And it just feels like this could have been, like, 150 pages instead of 330. Or this could have been, I don't know, maybe 200 pages. I, I think that's probably more realistic. And I, I don't know why it just felt so ridiculously padded. And I, I think that's probably a large portion of why I gave up on it as well. Happy to say on a reread, it still feels like d and I, I still think the Sword Mage class in and of itself feels a little broken, I guess. I mean, I really wonder, like, approximately what level is Jaren supposed to be? Because I guess he kind of feels like 9 or 10, but the way that the story's written, it seems like he should be, like, 3... And, I don't know, it, it just, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Whatever. That being said, it's not a horrible book, and it's not, you know, it doesn't have, except for the fact that it, it just is really long in the tooth, and basically you can stop reading at about the halfway point, and I would say, from what I remember of the book, like, the only thing that really changes or means anything in the last half is that the tiefling sorcerer joins their party. And it's like, that's cool. But otherwise, I think I could have just skipped to book two, and it probably would have felt about the same. There's a prologue in which Jaren does something really, really bad, and he can't pinpoint why. And every now and then throughout the book, he kind of thinks about how, man, it's weird that I don't know why I did that. I really hope that Baker is leading up to something there, 
that there's something going on. And it's not just the obvious thing that, like, this elf who hates him made him do it through, like, some sort of mind manipulation, because that would be really dull. But I hope that, like, some demon is trying to take him over, you know, something wild and crazy and out of left field. I would be even more disappointed than if it were the elf mind melded him or whatever. I would be even, even more disappointed if there's just no explanation there, because it's like... Uh, this really needs an explanation. It is a little nihilistically noir just to be like, sometimes good people do horribly cruel things, but it doesn't feel like that's what he was going for. He has one little section where he kind of makes it feel that way, but I don't know, that, that section didn't work in that way for me, so very curious to see where that is going. So, uh, I'm looking forward to more in this trilogy. I hope that Baker just kind of had a stumbling block here and was kind of trying to find his voice in 4E or something like that, and it'll all balance out in the next book. Uh, Corsair, I think, is the next one. Overall, a fairly good impression there, and especially, like, that first third is just so drenched in atmosphere. Oh, man, it really, really... I, I just... Oh, I really loved those parts of the book. Next up, we're going to be looking at Richard Lee Byers' Order or Brotherhood of the Griffin, so that ought to be intriguing. I think there are like six books in that. I hope it's not all one giant overlapping story. Jesus. I'll be very interested to see because, you know, after Unholy, I was kind of bored with uh, Alf and his companion, so we'll, we'll see if I have any interest in continuing that. Uh, but for now, this is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered. <laughs>